YouTube channel Physics for Medical and Engineering. So in this video, we will learn the production of ultrasonic waves by different method. In a previous video, we had a discussion on basic concept of ultrasonic waves and in this present video, we are going to discuss the production of ultrasonic wave. Ultrasonic waves have very high frequency, so this wave cannot be produced by the usual methods like from a diaphragm of a loudspeaker fed to the alternating current. This is due to the fact that at a very high frequency, the inductive effect of loudspeaker coil is so large that practically no current passes through it. Also, the diaphragm of a loudspeaker cannot vibrate at a such high frequencies and therefore different methods are specially used for the production of ultrasonic wave. So, ultrasonic waves generally produced by two methods magnostriction generator or we can say that magnostriction oscillator and the second one is piezoelectric generator or oscillator. In this video, we will learn the production of ultrasonic waves by magnostriction oscillator. Now, this oscillator works on the principle of magnostriction effect and the principle is when a ferromagnetic rod like iron or nickel is placed in a magnetic field parallel to its length, the rod experiences a small change in its length that is either in the form of elongation or compression occurs. So the meaning of magnostriction is magneto means applying magnetic field and striction means change in dimension. So we can say that magnostriction means change in the dimension of a ferromagnetic material when subjected to a magnetic field. This effect was first identified in 1842 by James Sewell when observing a sample of nickel. Now let's understand the construction and working of magnostriction oscillator. This one is the circuit diagram of magnostriction oscillator. Here AB is the rod made up of ferromagnetic material like iron or nickel. This rod is clamped in the middle. Now this rod is permanently magnetized by passing direct current in the beginning. Now here there are two coils L1 and L2 which are winded at the ends of A and B. One end of coil L2 is connected to the base of the transistor, base of this end pin transistor and the other end is connected to the emitter and the negative terminal of the battery. The coil L1 bound on the right side of the rod along with the variable capacitor C in the collector circuit of the NPN transistor. Here coil L1 and the variable capacitor C forms a resonance circuit which is also known as the tank circuit and the frequency of the oscillation is controlled by the variable capacitor C. Now this one is the emitter which reads the current which is passes from the circuit. So this is the construction part of the magnostriction oscillator. Now let's see how this oscillator work. Now when the battery is switched on, the tank circuit is set into the oscillation with a frequency of a vibration which is given by F1 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi undoubt L into C. Here L is nothing but the inductance of the coil and C is the capacitance of the capacitor. An alternating EMF is produced due to the vibration of the tank circuit. This alternating EMF induces an alternating magnetic field. And due to this magnetic field, the length of the rod gets changed. This change in the length of a ferromagnetic rod induces an EMF in coil L2. The induced EMF is fed into the base of the transistor and hence it gets amplified and this amplified EMF is fed into the tank circuit which again causes the change uh, in the length of the rod. So in this way oscillation is continuously maintained. The frequency of the oscillation of the rod is controlled by the variable capacitor C. Now the natural frequency of the rod 
is given by F2 is equal to P by twice L under root of Y by rho, where P is the harmonic mode, L is the length of the ferromagnetic rod, Y is the Young modulus and rho is the density of the material. Now, if the frequency of the tank circuit matches with the frequency of the vibration of the ferromagnetic rod, that is, if F1 is equal to F2, uh, uh, then the resonance will occur and the ultrasonic waves are emitted from the ends of the uh, ferromagnetic rod. So, in this way, the oscillation, oscillator is worked. Now, the advantage of these oscillators are magnostrictive materials are easily available and inexpensive. Oscillator circuit is simple to construct and large output power can be generated. And the disadvantages are we cannot produce frequency more than 3 MHz. It is not possible to get a constant single frequency because rod depends on temperature and the degree of magnetization. Now, as the frequency is inversely proportional to the length of the vibrating rod, the increase, uh, to increase the frequency, the length of the rod should be decreased, which is practically impossible. And there is a loss of energy due to the eddy current. So this is all about the magnetization oscillator. So in the next video, we will see the production of ultrasonic wave by piezoelectric generator. But I hope in this video, you understand the construction and working of the magnetization oscillator. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos. Thank you.